A couple weeks ago, I posted my very first film here on YouTube, and I was really, really happy with what I did and how it came out. And I thought I would take a look at just how I created it from start to finish. I'm gonna probably do this in three different videos, do this one on pre-production. Next week, I will look at the production of it, and the following week, I will look at the post-production of uh, the new Scarlet Letter. So come along as we take a look at how I made my first very, very short film. Welcome to Grant Takes Pictures. I'm Grant, and I make movies? I've been thinking about making a short film over the past couple months. I've really been inspired by Joey Famili from Tested.com. He's made a couple of short films since the COVID-19 lockdown started, and he just did them all by himself as a solo operation, and I thought I could do that too. I was trying to think of a script for a movie that I could make myself, and I was really having a hard time with it. I have an idea for something that I want to do, but the script just didn't come together. And then about six weeks ago, I was talking with some friends about Netflix and just how horrible some of their Netflix original content is. And we commented that it was really quantity over quality over there at Netflix. And I remarked that the red N on all of the uh, Netflix original content was really like a new scarlet letter. And as soon as I typed these words out, I, uh, I had this whole script just pop into my head all at once. Because I was already thinking about making a movie, I had Final Draft, uh, the trial version of Final Draft, on my computer. It's kind of the industry standard script writing software. And I just hopped on my computer and quickly typed out about a page and a half of this script. And it took me about 20 minutes and as I was still talking with my friends online, we kind of went back and forth. I sent them my draft, they sent back some comments, and about an hour later, I had a nearly finalized draft of my script all ready to go. It was really amazing how quickly it came together once I had an idea that I wanted to pursue. The original idea was to have this film be a couple instead of two brothers. But as I was thinking through the production of it, I realized that uh, I didn't really want to have two random people in my house uh, so I could film them. I just, I wanted to be able to do this as a solo production. And as I thought through how to do that, it really drove many of the choices in the script and in how I filmed it. So once I knew that I wanted to make this a solo production that I wanted to have me in it twice, uh, playing two brothers. I started thinking through how I wanted to shoot this movie. And I pulled out my iPad. And on the iPad, I have um, a program called Procreate, which allows me to draw. And I started storyboarding it out. With the script, I wrote kind of each line of the script in the storyboard and each place where I wanted to cut, I really had a new frame here in the storyboard. So the storyboard ended up being two pages for a 90 second movie. It really meant I had a new frame for every 10 seconds or so. In some of these shots, I was inspired by other movies that I wanted to replicate just a little bit. I really thought about my opening shot quite a bit. I wanted to have something that was a little bit reminiscent of Back to the Future. In Back to the Future, they have this very long opening segment where the camera is just wandering through um, a uh, Doc Brown's workshop with a whole bunch of clocks. And I really wanted to kind of open with a, an establishing shot that showed where we were and what was going on. Originally, I was going to do a long pan around the room, the long way around the room, to show the entire room, to start at the couch, 
go around the room, pass by the TV, and then back to the couch. And I spent quite a bit of time kind of dancing around my room trying to figure out how to do this. You can see from the footage that I shot, this early test footage, that it was all a little bit shaky. I don't own a steady cam or I don't have a dolly and I needed to end up with my camera on a tripod at the end. I really wanted to try to get it where you never saw a cut between the opening shot panning around the room and me walking into frame and sitting down on the couch. But I didn't want this one shot to be handheld and shaky. I wanted it to be as steady as possible. And as I went through this, I, I tried it a number of times and I even thought about building myself a little Steadicam rig that had you know, a Steadicam with a, uh, with a tripod coming off the bottom of it so I could go around the room and then set it down. But that just didn't work well for me, this idea. Partly, I thought that the pan around the room ended up taking too long that just panning around the room took about 40 seconds, and that was half the length of the entire film. So instead, what I decided was that I would just pan from the TV to the couch and leave out the whole backside of the room. This simplified things greatly. It meant I could just have the camera sitting there on a tripod and just turn it from TV to the couch. And that was it, that was the only motion. And then at the end, it would be sitting there pointed at the couch and I could walk into frame. And that's what I ended up doing. So I thought that you know these early test shots really helped me out in that way, that it made it so I could uh, simplify my movie just a little bit. And it still, I think, created a bit of the effect that I wanted of establishing the location, but in a, uh, in a constraint of where, what I would end up with in the movie, with, you know, so it didn't take up half the entire length of the film. One of the places I struggled in filming this was because I was playing two characters and I couldn't be playing in the scene with myself at the same time, was getting the timing of the dialogue correct. So during pre-production, what I did was I filmed myself recording it, I filmed both pieces of it, and I, uh, I tried to put it up on the TV screen so I could see myself speaking. And I added some volume indicators so I could actually see when noise was happening without having to listen to it. I was hoping this would make it so I could really get the timing down and not have to do any editing tricks to make the timing of the dialogue work in the actual film. The other place I really had to think through during pre-production was the shot looking down the couch where you see both brothers' faces uh, mostly in profile. And that was a difficult shot to get. I knew that all of my other shots, I would have the brothers separated so I could do two shots and have a uh, a cut between them and just merge them together that way. But when the brothers were overlapping, I really needed a, to do this in a different way. I wouldn't be able to have a clean cut right between the brothers uh, where you wouldn't be able to see uh, the gap between them. So what I had to do was I had to use a green screen. I obviously had never used a green screen before. I had never filmed a film before. But this was a, a unique challenge um, from anything I've ever done before. And I had this green screen, this green piece of fabric that I had used for Zoom calls and things like that. This was slightly different and I had to try to figure out first how to prop it up. I tried a couple of different things and they just didn't go very well. I tried to use a broom handle and um, just prop it up from the couch. and tried to string some uh, rope across the entire living room 
to support it a little bit and it never looked good. So what I ended up doing was I went down to Home Depot and got some two by one uh, just wood pieces and I made a frame for my, uh, my green screen and I just used a staple gun to attach it. And I have a nice solid green screen, five foot by six foot type thing that I was able to prop up in between the couch cushions and get it to work as a really quite good green screen. Once I had my green screen figured out, I knew my next challenge was going to be figuring out how to pull focus from one brother to the other. In my storyboard, this was something that I definitely wanted to do. And I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do this on my own. So I enlisted the help of my son to just uh, pull focus a little bit. I made some marks on a piece of tape on my uh, camera lens on the focus ring. And I had a mark on where it needed to be to be in focus for the closer brother and another mark where it needed to be to be in focus on the other brother. And I just had my son, as I said the word I needed to say, I just had him move the focus ring a little bit. So with all of those things, I thought I was ready to move on into production. The last thing I needed to do was figure out my lighting. And uh, that was a little bit more of an ordeal than I thought it would be. I had originally wanted to light this with just uh, practical lights, with the lights in the house. And I tried two different things. First, I tried it uh, at nighttime with just the lights on. And I will tell you, my house just isn't well enough lit for this. Even at f2.8 um, and uh, at 1 50th of a second, for um, each frame, I needed to be at like 1600 ISO and the grain was just too much. Um, I was unhappy with the way that the shots looked. So I tried to shoot it during the day and see if maybe I could change the setting from the nighttime to the daytime. The problem here was that the light moves just too quickly across the room and I didn't have enough time to be able to film the whole thing. You know, the entire scene is only 90 seconds, so really we should see no changes in the lights over uh, the course of this film. And I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get that done in enough time, quickly enough, where the light wouldn't change throughout the day. So that left me with doing it at night, but to light it well enough so I could uh, bring down my ISO enough. So I think I ended up at ISO 400, uh, F2.8, and 1 50th of a second, because I was uh, shooting 24 frames a second. And, um, you know, it worked out. So that was all of the effort that I went through during pre-production. Next week, I will talk about the production of the film and kind of how I shot it on the day of. Uh, what I used, all the equipment I used for shooting it, for lighting it, and um, you know everything else. I hope you look forward to seeing that video next week all about the production of the new Scarlet Letter. And uh, until next time, have a wonderful week. I'll see you then.